For politicians, there are two things that matter. There are chances of re-election, first and foremost, and then the option of climbing up in the ladders of power. Their promotion to the next level, if you may call it. It's re-election first and promotion next. The chances of getting re-elected must have been the primary motivating factor for the 139 congressional GOP representatives who signed off on the lawsuit filed by Texas against five states to overturn the election at the Supreme Court. A lawsuit that did not even merit oral arguments at the Supreme Court, but they signed off on them anyway because, hey, it will help all these representatives to tell their constituents in 2022 that they worked hard to keep Trump in power, that they sided with Trump every step of the way. But fate was laughing at their decision. It's quite possible that none of these Republicans had any idea how that one decision will impact their political careers forever and ever. The sequence of events that happened on January 6th has already started collecting trophies, extracting some heavy costs from people who stood by Trump. Republican Doug Steinhardt had plenty of ambition to become the governor of New Jersey. A staunch Trump supporter, he was fighting to capture the GOP's nomination for the governor's race in New Jersey. And he has announced that he is withdrawing from the race. So Doug Steinhardt dropped out of the race because of unforeseen professional obligations. That's the reason he gave for dropping out. But how many of you are ready to believe that is the actual reason for him to drop out? New Jersey is a near blue state. Voting for Democratic president after Democratic president over the years, but the GOP has still managed to win the governor's post in the state. Chris Christie is one fine example of GOP's ability in New Jersey. So it's not out of reach for the GOP. But the political landscape has been drastically altered post-January 6th, especially in states where both parties have a chance. Doug Steinhardt, due to his extreme level of support for Trump, will find it hard to win the race. When candidates find it hard, money doesn't flow. When money doesn't flow, candidates find it harder to win. So the best thing to do is to drop out. In the waning days of his presidency, Donald Trump's approval rating has cratered to 40%, standing very close to the lowest level of approval rating he achieved over his four-year time as independents and moderate Republicans started to flee the GOP. In two different polls conduct, but conducted by Ipsos and YouGov, 15% to 17% of Republicans believe that Trump must be removed from office for promoting the unrest. A whopping 90% of Democrats believe the same. And here is the kicker. 54% of independents believe Trump must be gone. Now, add that all up. Democratic voters are all in. 15% of Republican voters are in. And more than half of independents accept that. So when you add them all up, the GOP has no chance whatsoever to win any of the battleground states, states if an election were to be conducted tomorrow. And New Jersey's governor's race is scheduled for November 2nd, 2021. And the GOP needs a miracle to win that race. If they promote a candidate who is going to question election integrity, if they elect a candidate who likes QAnon, or if they nominate a candidate who will do a photo shoot with Proud Boys, then the Democrats may end up wiping the floor come November. Imagine this for a second. Trump gets impeached or acquitted by the Senate around July. He publicly endorses a candidate for the New Jersey's governor's race in August and campaigns for him in October. Will the Democrats be worried about Trump tanning out his base in New Jersey or will they be cheering for Trump to campaign so that they can pin the opposition candidate as tightly as they can with Trump and run ads about their tight relationship and try to make sure that voters don't forget about what happened on January 6th? How will that work out? Who out of these two candidates, the Democratic candidate or the Trump-supported candidate will have a better chance at bringing in the money. In a statement to Politico, the Coach Network said it will take at last week's events very seriously when deciding where they are going to spend millions of dollars in spending next election cycle. That's one GOP mega donor firing an open warning shot to all those GOP hopefuls that their actions will have funding consequences. Sheldon Adelson, a prolific GOP mega donor who pumped more than $75 million in this election cycle, died this week. Robert Mercer is nowhere to be found after his name filled up tabloids from London to New York in 2016. 
corporate packs have already said in no uncertain terms that they will withhold funding after january 6th no one who is at the top of a big organization will come forward to donate to trump again if that is the case with trump how forthcoming will they be to fund candidates supported by trump so who will win the race in new jersey any involvement involvement by trump will doom the chances of gop in new jersey and the dynamics will be the same in all battlegrounds across the country because if you cannot win the race just because the other side is energized like what happened in georgia what happens when more than half the independents think the top leader of your party must be removed just losing 4% or 5% of the base is often enough to lose a race right now more than 15% of republicans are asking for trump to be removed why would they be open to support a candidate trump supports if democrats say the right thing then they can convert this 15% or at least a major portion of that 15% to vote for them and pad up their winning margins even further if winning is the top priority for politicians what will they do when they start to believe that the mere association with trump is good enough to sink their candidacy we already have evidence of that from new jersey the center right of the gop knows what happened in georgia the democrats will be more than happy to take far right candidates one by one by pinning the stamp of trump on their backs the gop will not have a problem in kentucky arizona or oklahoma but they might as well withdraw from contesting in states like colorado new jersey michigan and wisconsin might as well save that money and invest in deep red states because hey at this rate even the deep red states may very well start becoming purple the gop yielded arizona and georgia this year when was the last time the democrats held four senate seats from arizona and georgia a lot of us weren't even born then i'm not sure if biden and john mccain were senators at that point but it happened now now of all times and it happened before january 6th what happened in arizona and georgia was not a fluke it happened because the center of the country is so fed up with what is happening at the far right it is not happy with the far left either but the center is not disgusted at what is happening in the far left if you look at all the congressional seats that the gop flipped this year nearly all their winning candidates were either women or a minority race or a veteran or some combination of all of these three biden won because he was fighting from the exact center of the democratic platform it doesn't matter whether you are a republican or a democrat unless you put out candidates who can demonstrate their ability to be at the center of the political spectrum there is zero chance of winning any of the battleground states center is where the relief of the country lies and that's the place the electorate is pushing both the parties to move towards the voters are smarter than what we give them credit for let's call it mass psychology thanks for watching if you like it please subscribe